Hey guys, welcome to game three and kind of the pickup team battle. So Gypsy ends up losing game two, game one. Actually, I'm not even sure they were keeping score overall. I think it was just kind of a general team battle thing. The thing that is interesting about this match is that it's going to be played on Good Night. Good Night has kind of these, ooh, it's got a hallucinated Ursadon in the middle. Good Night made by Crystal Drag, North American uh, map make maker. This is actually one of the final four as part of the New Worlds map creation contest. I highlighted, I'm trying to remember what I highlighted, Turbine. Highlighted Turbine earlier. Haven't been able to highlight Good Night yet in a cast, so I'm glad to do so. And I believe the winner of this map maker contest is going to end up in one of the Korean leagues, I believe. This map will be played in one of the Korean leagues, if I recall correctly. So if you have not already voted, go ahead and vote in the finals. That is put on, I believe, by either directly by Team Think Quick in affiliation or... Uh, anyway, uh, Caster Muse, I believe, enables it, uh, as well as Ox and a lot of those guys. Kind of the bridge between the Korean community and the North American community. This is going to be Sugo versus Striker. Just as you can see, this is kind of a standard natural expansion, kind of a weird... This is what I like about this map, actually, is this natural expansion where you kind of have a three-way entrance, but it's kind of a smaller entrance right here, a wider gap right there leading out to kind of a third. So it's kind of like halfway macro, halfway harassable. And yeah, obviously you have this interesting, weird double gas, double mine mineral thing here in the middle. So it's a four-player map, a little bit larger. This is one of the finalists. You can, I believe there's also other show match casts that were out there for the other matches around. I haven't had time to check out all of them, but if they are around, check them out. Striker, I should go ahead and uh, highlight these guys. Both Sugo and Striker also stream on Twitch. Check both of them out. I will go ahead. If I haven't put the, harass me on this one. If this gets uploaded and you do not see links directly to their Twitch account, in the natural expansion, or into the natural, in the, the <laughs> brain doing two things at once there. Pile on the natural expansion, the forge is up. So this is potential for Striker to go ahead and, yeah, he, he can't see it in that back corner. And he can actually seal himself in by, I believe, placing another pylon right here. So you can get the cannon, and that's a big harassment. So this is going to be huge. Some nice little cheese here by Sugo overall. Striker in a little bit of trouble. Cannon warping in, that drone making its way across seeing absolutely nothing at this stage while well, harassing. And this is cute. I like what Sugo did here. He's sending another probe in. So he moved in, was not scouted, sent another probe in to be like, yep, yep, this is just normal time and you don't have to worry about anything. Not. Spawning pool coming in. This is going to be the first initial Zerglings, but these Zerglings are not even going to be finished by the time this first cannon is warping in. So it might be a quick match. Now that natural expansion's up, the cannon hopping over the wall before the creep can go ahead and blockade it. And again, I think something can be placed here to go ahead and completely wall that off. So it might be a quick match altogether. That's four Zerglings being produced as well as not as the, instead of the full six. This is actually a drone at the natural expansion, an additional cannon as well. So let's see what Striker has to go ahead and try to defend this. This might just be like, ooh, cheesy cannon rush, and that is the match overall. Third base has been planted at six o'clock. So we got initial four Zerglings plopped out. This natural expansion is, well, it looks like he's just going to sack it. So he's just going to go ahead and drop this hatchery. And maybe he's just going to move drones out to the interesting play here from Striker. So I think what Striker's thinking is, is like, okay, you know what? You invested 300 resources here and a pylon. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get a couple drones out, take the six o'clock base and play it two hatch from here. And we'll see how that goes. Because this is, keep in mind, this is a, a sizable investment here. And it canceled those drones to the natural expansion. So it, it's a lot of delayed mining time. And I definitely give a big advantage to Sugo. He's getting his natural expansion up. as already has two cannons right there. But by doing, and ooh, got spotted. Just kidding. I was going to say, maybe if this goes unspotted here, this could turn into something. But this is certainly crippling Striker's economy as far as a follow-up and that probe and you can see he's just ignoring he's trying to ignore is he gonna get a drone kill on top of everything else wow sugo putting on a clinic now it's like okay yep took out that natural expansion and now i might even get two drone kills at this six where you're trying to recover striker having a lot of trouble dealing with this plus he's probably gonna have to build and he, it looks like he's opting to not build so in base hatch hydralis den to follow this up so he's gonna go for a hydra bust potentially to follow this up some nice micro, at least with that drone to get a kill and establish some semblance of an economy. Three cannons are down. Striker has to feel decimated 
as far as what he's going to be able to accomplish here. Sugo has got to feel very, very comfortable producing, producing initial zealot here, but the game is not over yet. Things look, just everything looking to be in Sugo's favor. He's not only stopped this natural expansion, crippled that economy, but he got two drone kills and knows about this base here. But this is going to be three hatch, I assume, attempted Hydra Bust. Drones just again ignoring these cannons, going to go ahead to try to rebuild this economy by sneaking across there out of this three base. I like this recovery, at least from Striker, to give himself a chance in this match comparatively. Level on weapons along the way. Cybernetics core up, pylon. Critically, though, only a single gateway versus units rather than two additional gateways to follow this up from Sugo. He's also getting that Stargate because he wants to kind of get eyes. So there is a window here for Striker where he can just start kind of doing a modified three hatch Hydra all in play. And maybe, maybe if he gets lucky and can just flood units before Sugo really realizes it and is able to plant enough cannons down to deal with it, he might be able to get a quick sneaky win from behind. We will see. Hydralisks flooding through the Zealots moving up. This might be a big indicator as the Zealots moving into the natural expansion to seize the Hydralisks. You'll see, there are additional cannons being planted from Sugo. So now Sugo getting more of a death grip, the vice grip on everything. The Zealot was kind of sneaking out, making sure there weren't additional expansions that were out otherwise. But the Hydralisks making their way towards the front, working their way on this initial gateway. Stargate is up. It's going to remain silent. Citadel of Adun planted as well. So Suko still needs to defend his front against the Hydralisk attack, but if he can defend the Hydras, he's certainly going to end up winning this match overall. Still might end up losing what level 1 weapons. Let's see if he gets the cancellation in time. Unfortunately, I do not think he canceled, so I think he ended up losing those resources. All sorts of cannons to defend this as far as a follow-up, though. All sorts of cannons. But I got to say, this, at least for Striker... This is kind of a recovery situation. Actually, only dedicating four Hydralis to try to clear out those cannons ends up eating some damage as a result. Sugo very well boxed in, has a huge economic advantage, 37 probes to 26. But Striker, with some nice recovery, Overlord getting taken out. As that Corsair, I believe, was able to provide some vision. These are some misrallied drones, I believe. Corsair making its way. He's going to go ahead and try to check out what Striker's up to in the meantime. Lair about halfway finished. There's nothing. I don't see any Hydralisks in position to defend. Natural Expansion was cleaned out otherwise. So this is turning into more of a, a standard map with Sugo having a gigantic follow-up lead. Additional gateways being plopped down. Psystorm being researched. And it looks like, okay, there are Hydralisks to go ahead and defend these overlords that are out in the field. Looks like these drones now being pulled back. Battle drones. They they wanted a taste of battle, but Striker going to deny it to them. Get back to work. Out on the front. Forge now in that back corner, making its way towards level 1 weapons. So everything in Sugo's favor currently. Huge economic lead. He's, like, boxed in-ish. Ish. And I mean ish because he can, as soon as he's producing out of these gateways, particularly with Zealot leg speed... He'll be able to hop right on top of this without too much trouble. Striker going for a spire to follow this up. But as long as Sugo keeps an eye, which actually I think he did he end up losing that Corsair? Might have ended up losing that Corsair on the front or he drawing it back. As long as he keeps an eye with this Corsair and gets a good look yeah, at the high looks on the front and potential tech switches in the main, he should be okay. There is another window for him right here where if he just saves up a bunch of units... Just kind of just builds a bunch of mutalisks and tries to go for a tech switch. Sugo isn't, and Sugo doesn't spot it, which right now that Corsair is not floating towards the main. If he can get like a quick tech switch, these cannons are just planted here. They're not at the main, and there might not be enough of an air force to defend this. Then it's basically going to be Psystorm and potential High Templar to try to defend things otherwise. Dark Templar is out here, trying to hunt down that drone, not quite able to do so. There is an Overlord and a couple Hydralisks to go ahead and defend here at the 6 o'clock location. And another hatchery being planted down. So Striker kind of... And it looks like, okay, the Corsair was able to wander up. It does see that Spire. And that's going to, pr to prompt some more Corsair to be built as well as some cannons in the main. That should prevent any sort of Striker comeback in that regard. The Zealot's moving forward. With that Zealot leg speed getting on top of those Hydralisks, going to be able to break any potential contain right there. There's still seven seven Mutalisks 
being produced from Striker. That might give him a little bit of map control. I think he's hoping to go ahead and deny a third as far as a follow-up. And I got to say, this is a nice recovery overall. But Striker still has some work to do to get back in this match. I like the Zerglings camping at the 12 o'clock and the 3 o'clock base. High Templar with Storm right there. And the Zealots marching out. Actually, with this grouping of Zealots, they should be able to crash in. There's no Observer, keep in mind. So that Lurker is going to have to do some work here at the, at the 6 o'clock. Mulus diving into the natural expansion, getting a handful of kills right there. But now they're running into those Corsair that are just obliterating them. I don't think Striker was expecting that. You could just see the scatter for a moment. And a Psy Storm on top of everything else. Only four Mutalisks left. There's also a Shuttle. So this is almost turning into... I wouldn't call this a Bisu build. It looks like Sugo going to go ahead and load up some High Templar, Dark Templar, and Zealots. With the Corsair and the weakened Mutalisks, he can go ahead and do some drops. And Striker is running into a potential all-in situation right here. Where he's dedicated a lot of a lot of resources into not taking expansions and not building drones. And instead trying to build an attack force to do some form of damage. Was oh, that shuttle going to get taken out? He's done a great job of, of spending the units he's got. And he, honestly, I, I feel like Striker's done a good job recovering in this match where he didn't turn it into complete auto loss off losing his natural expansion. But nevertheless, still economically behind. And that shuttle has managed to sneak out. There's only, what, two Mutalisks here at the 6 o'clock. A drop and a storm still could be immense amount of damage there. Zergling on patrol, still at the 3 and 9. So Striker's plan from here is still try to deny additional bases. No observers overhead, so that Lurker doing all sorts of damage. Sugo making a bit of a misstep and just walking a lot of un his units over those Lurkers. But while that's happening, we had the drop at the 6 o'clock. No detection here all of a sudden. And a storm drop over that natural expansion. Nine kills on that High Templar. So the Dark Templar dropped here. Able to get all sorts of drone kills. Look at this. Nine kills completely emptying, emptying this third base. And completely emptying that natural expansion on top of everything else. So if things weren't bad enough for Striker, now he is absolutely all in. He's down to 18 drones. So all Sugo has to do is get some form of detection or enough Psy Storm. Looks like he's finally getting an Observer out. Or enough Psy Storm. We can clear these Lurkers at the front. And he should be able to comfortably win the game from here. Striker... Well, getting small victories here. Able to take out two of those Corsairs overhead. Maybe three, landing a lot of those Scourge. Sugo wasn't expecting that. The Observer now on front for Sugo. It looks like those Lurkers going to be taken out fairly quickly and efficiently. Ooh, maybe not. I take it back. Pressing in, backing out. Does have level one weapons, level one armor. Which I believe makes these Dragoons much stronger than the pound for pound than these Hydralisks out here. But the issue is just getting army positioning. As he's trying to sneak out of this base. Still has a 13 supply lead. Still has a huge economic lead. But still needs to break out of this base and get additional expansions. If he's going to end up winning this overall. Striker looking for an observer snipe. Not able to get it. Trying to follow it up with another observer snipe. Not able to get it again. And Striker somehow holding this natural expansion contain against these Dragoons. Despite having an absolutely obliterated economy. The Dark Templar pocketing in the corner is going to walk back up, getting 14 kills. And exit? Are you kidding me? What a baller. 14 kills and escaping. And using that bit of a moment for of distraction to go ahead and clear that natural expansion. Okay, now Sugo with a 40 supply lead. This is what I was expecting a little bit earlier in this match. His natural expansion look, looking a little bit thin, but now has map control. To go ahead and take potentially that third of that 9 o'clock location. The Dark Templar high-fiving all of his brothers up in here with his 14 kills. And I don't know that Striker has enough to defend all of his holdings. He does have a bit of an attack force out here. Still sitting at these 34 drones. It looks like he was able to re-drone fairly rapidly. And I got to give it to Striker for what looked like a terrible early game position. He's really made a match out of this. Which just is a testament to his level of play. Sugo continuing to press in. To the 6 o'clock, backing off. Hydralisks moving in. They need to be very careful. 
There is a High Templar. Looking for a storm opportunity. And it looks like Sugo getting engaged upon kind of a pincer attack. And he might be able to clear this army out. And he's he might end up losing this army without securing a 3 o'clock or a 12 o'clock base. Still with a 40 supply lead though, keep in mind. But reinforcements streaming their way down. Sugo's not accomplishing a lot with this yet. Aside from killing kind of the, the latent ground army and leaving Striker a little bit exposed but striker's done a great job of picking up the observers which is going to allow these lurkers to go ahead and stand as far as defense force to that natural the six o'clock still doesn't have any lurkers to support however but critically okay now sugo finally taking that mineral only to go ahead and get his economy to continue but his his mineral sorry the minerals at his main are mined out currently he needs to yeah establish some additional bases it looks like he is scooping around to go ahead and do so Striker still effectively mining at three bases, as Zerg are apt to do because their units are so cheap. Striker, 30 supply behind, but does have all the, all the components he needs to stay in this match. The big critical component here, and it looks like he is getting that ventral stacks to go ahead and potentially do a drop someplace. If he can get a lurker drop, I don't know. If maybe if he gets a lurker drop somewhere in this area, can deep power some pylons, something along those lines. If he can get a lurker drop in this back corner, I'm not sure if that can't, maybe one cannon reaches. Sugo doing a great job with that Zealot. Going to go ahead and make sure that drone isn't able to cap anything else. And Sugo also leaving this large army to kind of scoot around to go ahead and stay secured. Both players kind of licking their wounds and trying to reassess their situation. Striker does have lurkers. And I like where he's planting these lurkers kind of over this dual ramp location where it's a little bit difficult to attack up. So again, Observerless is going to go ahead and push up into this. I feel like this might be a little misstep. A great storm over that ledge, though. I don't know that he has enough Scystorm to push through that and end up taking losing a lot of Zealots for free. A pincer attack coming from the north, looking to catch those High Templar out of position. The High Templar out of position to the south, Scystorming from the north. Now the Observer's in position. Sugo doing a pretty good job of protecting those High Templar, i got to say, and getting some nice Zealot Storms off. But again, and Striker kind of forcing these attacks from two directions. He's ha he has managed to clear, Striker has managed to clear things out in that bottom right-hand corner, but with this marauding army of Sugos kind of out on the map, I don't know that he's going to have an opportunity to drone, and he honestly just has to protect what he's got. High Templar picked off Striker, able to pick off two High Templar right there with those Hydralisks. Great play, which I don't know if that makes this impenetrable or not. Striker just trying to go into more of a defensive match at this stage, going to seal up. And now actually running up for a counterattack. All sorts of Zerglings trying to flood through and draw Sugo back. There are cannons there to defend that mineral only. So both players, yeah, kind of... I'm wondering if it has to do with the nature of this map, with being a little bit newer on this map. Sugo has managed to clear out that 12 o'clock location. He's going to go ahead and grab that fourth base. I think that is what's going to put him in an excellent position as far as continuation of this because he's got this army with a superior supply count, very a lot superior upgrades, a lot superior upgrades. They just hit harder and are a bigger threat. Sugo marching up. All those Zergans getting obliterated by that size storm. A great size storm there by Sugo. The lurker is not quite planted at that northern location. He is going to take the high ground right here to be a threat just... Two Hydralists moving up. That single Zealot and some reinforcement should be able to clear that out before that Nexus is taken out. And, but Striker needs to do something about this. Some Lurkers eating a lot of Sidestorm before they're even planted. And a lot of Dragoons now can just hold up on this high ground and hold this position and even just being a threat here from Striker will give Sugo an advantage. And this natural expansion, actually, I don't see any defense force here at that natural expansion. Aside from a single sunken colony, a handful of Zerglings are starting to press in. Zerglings trying to come from the rear. There are Zealots there to engage them. The Dragoon's not focused firing that sunken colony, but that sunken colony being taken out nevertheless. And Sugo's starting to press into this natural expansion. I don't think Striker has a, enough reinforcement points or anything else to defend this. Having to cancel, it looks like... Oh, sorry, he does have level 2 spines. And there's GG from Striker. Well played by Sugo, top to bottom. I gotta give it to Striker, though. I gotta give it to Striker. 
for losing a natural expansion. Wow, when did this game gonna... I'm looking for the pause location. These Zealots just having a field day. Was this a continued play moment? Keep in mind, also, the GG did happen in chat. So some strong storms from Sugo to close it out. There it paused. That was like a good, like, 15 seconds. I don't think that was the lag either. It's like continued play. I just want to see them killing stuff. I got to give it to Sugo. So some amazing things happened here. First of all, Sugo did some great unit positioning to protect those high Templar. Striker, nevertheless, still seemed to be able to find moments where he could go ahead and kill a couple high Templar midfield. But with this, four bases established. Striker not able to establish his fourth because Sugo just has this marauding ar army and also just really highly upgraded army in the middle of the field, able to close it out. But I got to give it, despite the win to Sugo and a lot of the awesome play in the middle, I got to give this to Striker for losing his natural expansion right at the start there. That was an excellent recovery. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. Be again, check out these guys' stream. Uh, it should be in the description. If it's not, leave a big comment yelling at me in all caps or something like that to put it up there. Thanks for listening.